Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? Welcome in. Winning Cures Everything, college football gambling picks for week number 15. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And this is it. This is it. Now, obviously, we will have our bowl games. Oh, we're going to bet all the bowl games. We're going to stay in the NFL. We're, you know. We're doing that. But as far as a college football week and, and a video for that, we're going to have individual videos for every bowl game. But this is the last. All of them. Yes. We're picking every single bowl game. Last year, uh, you and, so as we did totals and spread. I didn't like that because you, you know I don't like totals. Well, but you did really good on totals. I know I did, and but better I don't like on it. totals than you did on the spread. And I did better on the spread than either way. We both hit like sixty percent. No, we did well. We did fine. Yeah, we did really, Are we really. We're doing good. totals again. Uh, yeah, we'll probably do totals again. Okay, I'm not afraid of losing money. I just don't. don't but no, we don't. We don't have to do totals. We can do whatever you want. Hey. Leave in the comments. Tell they're us if you want us to do totals. They're going to want us to do totals. Well, we don't know that. Yes, they are. <laughs> Give us more stuff. You uh, <laughs> you guys will be the determining factor. If you want us to well, do totals, we'll do totals. Deal. I'll give so, you totals. But we'll, uh, we'll make picks on every single bowl game. Now, I'm going to be honest. During the bowl previews, I'm just going to tell you, I didn't watch a single game of this team playing this other team. <laughs> but this is what I think. And you can do with it what you will. There you go. Gary watches a lot of these small teams. He knows them far better than I do. I'm not going to act like I know something I don't. I'd, I'll give you a pick. Yeah. And I'll have some sort of logic and reasoning, and I'll be honest about that logic and reasoning. Makes sense. And I, I will have all of my numbers, even and though Gary the numbers have, numbers. have not done anything. I don't. I don't do that. The numbers have been terrible this year. Yeah, so that's God. why you, I, don't so, like, hey, I don't like anything I can't hit. Sometimes you're just going to have that. That's the, uh, that's the ogre in me. Let's go. Got that right. Uh, go over to winningcureseverything.com. Of course, the website, it's got all of our videos, podcasts, picks, previews, social media platforms, et cetera. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment. Tell us what you like this week, what you don't like. All of that wonderful stuff. Just saying. Toss it in there. We appreciate all of you for jumping in here. Go over to Smack Apparel. S-M-A-C-K-Apparel.com. Use promo code WIN. You get 20% off your order. It doesn't matter how many shirts you buy there. It doesn't matter what you buy. You get 20% off with promo code WIN. That's W-I-N. And any order over $40 is going to ship for free. So go check it out. They got some awesome shirts. All your favorite college and pro teams. They got anti-rivalry shirts. They got novelty shirts. They got just cool-looking shirts. So go check them out. SmackApparel.com. Use promo code WIN for 20% off. And we're brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them, along with all the steakhouses. They got some awesome concerts coming to town. They got golf courses. They got everything. Find more information at tunicatravel.com. Let's go ahead and fire in. I went four and four last week. There you go. Lost $163.64. I started four and two, and then Colorado bit me. And somebody else bit me late. Uh, oh, Oklahoma State. Yeah, we both Just had a... Irritated yeah, the we mess We both had a Gundy in that one. Uh, you went 4-4 four and four as well. Yep. Only lost uh, $36.36. Yeah, just a big. That's it. Yeah. Overall, I am 44-68 and 68 on the season. I have lost 43.85 units. You are 43-47. and 47. You are up 8.46 units on the year. You have hit your big bets... I have hit basically no bets. You know who did pretty well last week? Tell me. Ryan Spann. There you go. Ryan Spann went six and four last week. We had like nine, ten people tie. Uh, yeah. With, I was with say, six wins. When you, when you go six and four, we're getting deep in the tiebreaker. Yeah. He, uh, he hit the tiebreaker. That's, he, that's he, it. The to a point total between the two games was 120. He guessed 121. Ooh. Look at Not that. bad. Not bad. Look at that. So, he, uh, he was right on it, but you can be a winner this week as well. Just go over to the Pick'em Contest over at winningcureseverything.com. Up in the navigation bar, it says Football Picks Contest. Enter that thing, put in your name, put in your email, pick 10 games against the spread. We're going to have seven college games and three NFL games. Go and check it out, of course, over at winningcureseverything.com. 
Let's jump in to this bad boy. I will start us out. I got seven picks. Chris has got five. Pick number one for me. I'm going to the ACC championship game. And this may be a bad idea. I'm going against Clemson. I like Bronco Mendenhall. The, the line jumped way, way up. It's 28 and a half right now. I'm taking Virginia plus 28 and a half at $200. I, I, I'm getting more than four touchdowns. I think Virginia can keep this thing within about three touchdowns. Yeah. At, now, I think that Clemson is going to win. This is I think what they're going to smash is, them. Is Clemson fans are going to come out of the woodwork talking about how you hate them and you trash them, you don't respect them. You yeah. still think they can win by four touchdowns. That's not enough, apparently. Yeah, it's. I think it's disrespect. They Gary. could win forty-two to fourteen, and I would still cover here. That's I right. feel okay about that. I think that's now, perfectly fine. I think it is possible that Clemson wins forty-five to fourteen. I think it is more likely that this ends up being a forty-two to twenty game, yeah. something like forty-five to twenty. Yeah, we whatever. like Bronco Mendenhall. I wow. think that Virginia is a pretty damn good team. Yeah. I, I agree. I They're don't, well coached. I don't hate it. They they rarely beat themselves, and you got a senior quarterback. You got a really good defense. Now, they're not as good as Clemson. No, oh gosh, no. Talent but wise, I, they're not. Yeah, it's not close. I do think in this spot, like I have seen Clemson in this spot before, against teams that were not as good as this Virginia team, and. You know, they some teams kind of hung around. North Carolina did it under Larry Fedora. Uh, Virginia Tech did it under Justin Fuente. Yep. Like, I think Clemson is better now. But I, this defense is really good for Virginia. Uh, I'm going to take that. Plus 28 and a half at $200. Who is your first pick? Well, I've been on it all year. I We knew this was going to come down to an Oregon-Utah matchup. Before the season started, everyone kind of thought this was going to be what we got, right? Yep. This is chalk. I've been on the side of Oregon. You've been on the side of Utah. I'm not getting off my boat just because they lost to Arizona State. On the road in a Pac-12 after dark game. Yeah. yeah. Herm Edwards, hell of a football coach. That's a tough place to win. Yeah. And and I, I just, I'm just not giving up on that. I get a six-and-a-half point head start, 75 bucks on, on Oregon Ducks. I, could I also think – my logic here is is I think Utah's good. This will be the best offense Utah's played all year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Utah has not their defense is incredible. But their their defense has not played a good offense all year. And I think that this will be the best offense they play. I'm not saying they'll win the game, but I think they'll keep it really close. I also think if Mario Cristobal is going to show up in a game and prove that he deserves to be the head coach at a big power five school not just a regular Power 5 school, but a big boy school like Oregon is, he's got to find a way to win this game. Yeah. Okay. I'm with you. I'm with you. Next game up for me. I'm going to Boca Raton. UAB at Florida Atlantic in the CUSA championship game. I like Florida Atlantic here. Minus seven. Uh, And you can still find it at seven or seven and a half, whatever. I don't think it necessarily matters. I've already taken it at seven. Florida Atlantic, I know people are saying, oh, Lane's looking at other jobs. Lane's doing this. Yeah, Bill Clark is doing the same thing. I understand UAB has got a good defense. UAB, I know that they get they uh they they got the running back back. I got that. But they don't have the quarterback back. And UAB has been the beneficiary of a lot of teams not being at full strength when they played them. I think in this instance, FAU at home is going to score a ton of points here. And I think they kind of wiped the floor a little bit with UAB. I it, This is not to say that Bill Clark isn't a good coach. And I don't think it has anything necessarily to do with the coaching matchup. I think FAU is so immensely more talented and more experienced than UAB is right now. UAB, if Bill Clark stays there in the next two, three years, really in the next two years, uh, they've got a ton of underclassmen right now. I think 
this is not the year for them to win the CUSA again. The fact that they are back in this position is awesome. But FAU, with that offense and the way that they are playing right now, I would not want to be on the opposite sideline. Uh, give me FAU minus seven for $300. All right. I'm going to take UAB for 100 bucks plus seven and a half. <laughs> I, I love Bill Clark. I don't think Bill Clark's name is coming up in any of these coaches. Uh, uh, jobs right now. Lane is actually actively interviewing for them, um, and and I like being able to go against that. Uh, I also think they're going to be just the more pro- – they're not going to be the better team athletically-wise. That Just dude-wise, getting off the bus, they don't have the dudes Lane Kiffin's group has. Yeah. But I think they're going to be more prepared. I think they're going to be a better coach team, and I think they're going to be a better focused team. Okay. So give me the plus seven and a half. I Bill Clark. I like it. I like Dragons. Obviously, I'm going the opposite way, but I can see where you're coming from. So it, if we end up middling, like if I've got them at minus seven and you got them at plus seven and a half, I'll take it. And it because hits on seven. That means you that push means and it, I win. That means you win. Yeah, not too bad. Next one up for me. We go into the Liberty Bowl. I like Cincinnati plus nine and a half here. I think this is a tight ball game. They got Ritter back at quarterback for Cincinnati. Uh, now, obviously, they're going to play the freshman some. I don't know necessarily what that does, but I do think that Cincinnati kind of played Memphis to their tempo and their style, the way that they wanted to do it. Now, Memphis, of course, is explosive. They had the the kickoff return for a touchdown. You know, there there were plays, and this is how Memphis wins. That's right. right. They they have explosive plays, and they are able to put up more points and therefore get wins. I mean, we'll see what happens. I think that this is a much closer game. Obviously, Norvell is looking at all these other jobs, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think Luke Fickle's going anywhere yet, uh, at least at least not until one of these Big Ten jobs opens. I mean, we, we still got time in the silly season. We'll see what happens. But, uh, but yeah, I'm taking Cincinnati plus 9.5 for $200 here. So we're the same boat here. I got Cincinnati. I was at this game. Uh, take away the kickoff return to open the game, and the game is drastically different. Yeah. And, the, and everybody in the stadium believed in the middle of the third quarter Cincinnati was about to come on and win this football game until the Cincinnati kid threw a punch, got big 15-yard penalty when it was about to be like third and 16, and nobody thought Memphis was going to get this third down because they yeah. just looked like crap the last two or three possessions in a row. Cincinnati's offense was rolling. Memphis threw a trick play the next play, scored a touchdown, broke their back. Totally changed the game. Um, I like the nine and a half points. I once again, I find myself every year just looking what coaches are looking at other jobs. I'm betting against them because I know that Mike Norvell has been up until one or two in the morning every night talking to other athletic directors. Yeah, that's that's time that he is not. But there's when you're a coach at this level, you're competing against sleep. Okay, you're you're working so much at this point in time in the year, putting in game planning, scheming, making sure your guys are ready, making sure your guys aren't getting in trouble. Like all of the things that you have to do as a coach, the last two to three weeks you've been doing them, whatever you did in August and September, you're doing them times two or times three. Therefore, the only thing you're not doing when you're coaching is sleeping. He's spending a lot of time looking at other jobs, talking to other people, playing yeah. one guy against the other guy. Um, I I just think I like Cincinnati. And I think Cincinnati, I thought the line last week was absurd when it was 12, when it got to 12 and a half. Yeah. I bet Cincinnati had Cincinnati in the money line parlay, hit the, hit the win, missed the money line. That's fine. Um, I think, once again, when this opened at 11, I dropped pretty quick to nine and a half, and it stayed at nine and a half all day. Yeah. I'm I'm fine with this number. Yeah. I uh I'm with you. I'm with you. All right, of course, hang around until the end of the podcast. Uh we've got TJ Reeves on with us this yeah. week. Uh Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter. He is based down in Tampa. It, he's we're talking college football jobs, all kind of stuff. We'll uh we'll hit on some of these conference championship games, of course. Next one up for me. Miami, Ohio at Central Michigan. This is 11 a.m. game. This is the MAC Championship game. Look, Jim McElwain, back in the conference championship game. And they have been playing, like, lights out here. Yeah, they've done really well with him. But this line opened at, like, four. 
and it jumped to seven. Now, Central Michigan has won three straight here. Miami of Ohio went to Ball State last week, got beat by two touchdowns. Maybe pump the brakes on, on everybody jumping on this so quick. I understand Central Michigan has looked good. Yep. Give me Miami of Ohio plus seven. They got some experienced dudes. It, I understand they got to go on the road here. But seven points is a lot here. I think Miami, Ohio keeps this really, really close. I mean, in conference, other than that Ball State game, they have been lights out this year. Uh, they they were close with Cincinnati early. It, the game got away on a, on a couple of explosive plays. Cincinnati is just a far superior football team, though. Agreed. We didn't but know they, that when they played. But, but, but they, they still only got beat by, what, three touchdowns? Yeah. I mean, it, like yeah. it, the, the line yeah. was 18. They lost by 21, I think, yeah. or 22, whatever And, and like I said, we, when those two teams played, we didn't know Cincinnati was the team that they've turned out to be. Exactly. So That's Miami, a Ohio. damn good like, team you got beat by. And that was, way, or that was week three, week four, yeah. whatever it was. But, look, Miami, Ohio has looked good all season in the MAC. I like them in this spot. Give me Miami, uh, Miami of Ohio plus seven for $200. Who you got next? If you listen to me at all this year, you know where I'm going. Big 12 championship game. I, I have been in love with the Baylor Bears since early, early, early. I picked them to be – this was the Big 12 championship game that I picked before the season started, and uh, and I'm getting it. I don't think I had the stones to pick them to win it when it all started. I got it now, though. I'm getting plus nine. I think they're going to win this game, and I kind of think they're going to beat the hell out of them. What uh, – what is oh the line is nine right now at yeah, least on that one. It's nine. Where'd you see it at? I saw it eight and a half. Uh, I've got it at nine there, and I've got it at nine at Vegas Insider too. Let's see. Sportsbook review has got. Yeah, it opened at nine and a half and bet down to nine. Let's see. There's a there's. Let's see. Bet online bookmaker have it at eight. Bavada and Heritage have it eight and a half. Five dimes and Pinnacle have it at nine. So it's pretty much anywhere. Let me pull over this. All right, so which, whichever one. You're going to take Baylor plus nine. Huh? Well, I'm going to take Baylor nine. I've got two places that I've got it open now, and they both have it at nine. That makes sense. I didn't know that it would be that yeah, yeah, it's, all it, over the place. But, it's kind of all over the place. Yeah. Um, anyway, I, I, think, I think Baylor's the better football team. I think we saw that when they played in Waco. They got up on them big, and something just kind of screwy happened, and they got let loose. But I'm going to tell you this. That defense got the best defensive player. One of the best defensive players in the country back. Led all of college football in sacks before he went down. He's back in this game. He missed the first game. And I think he's going to be a difference maker. I don't think they're coming. Now, I don't think they're getting down by 28. But I I, I just don't think that's going to – I don't think they're going to have to score the way they did last time. And I think they're going to be able to score whenever they want. I'm going the opposite of you. Come on. I'm going Oklahoma. I'm going to take the eight. That's so, fine. That's <laughs> fine. Oklahoma minus eight. Uh, Oklahoma gets C.D. Lamb back this time. Okay. They didn't have him the first time. Uh, I think Oklahoma found something last week against Oklahoma State. Now, obviously, Oklahoma State had something to do with that. But uh, you play Lincoln Riley twice, he's going to have some new wrinkles for you the next go-round. We saw it with Texas last year. I like Oklahoma in this spot. I'll be pulling for Baylor. I will have money on Oklahoma. That's fine. So, Oklahoma minus eight against Baylor. I've got two hundred dollars on it. What uh, what was your money total? Two fifty. Two fifty. As you uh, yeah, you you are really in on this. And I think I think it's gonna but, be big. I'm gonna have a. I'm gonna have. Normally, I sprinkle a little on the money line. I'm gonna have a lot on the money line. I mean, I think they're gonna win this game. There are sixty three percent of the bets uh, per sports book review. Sixty three percent of the bets on Baylor. That's fine. What uh, what does Vegas Insider say? Seventy one. Seventy one, yeah. But so I don't I, think I don't think that's enough. No, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily matter. I'm with you on that. that, that that's not a that's not an eighty percent one way or the other. Sixty three percent doesn't move the needle. That doesn't even move the line. Yeah. No, it no, did no. move the line a half a point on, on, on this one, but you know. I'm with you. I'm, I'm with gonna you. tell you this. Sense. If it moved it from nine and a half to eight and it's only sixty three percent, they're afraid of that sixty three percent. Yeah, yeah, you might be right. If they're moving it that much because of sixty three percent. They're afraid of that. Now that that makes sense, and you you might be right. I would love to see it. I would love. How to many see picks it. you got left? I got two left. I'm Go gonna ahead, give one more, another. and then you'll give your last one, right? Yeah. Um, 
for me, my next pick, write my time down here, Hawaii is going to Boise State. Now, we saw this earlier in the year. And Boise won, I think it was like 59 to 37. I mean, just it put them put them down pretty good. It was a fun game. It was, a lot it was of definitely fun. fun. I, was, I was not expecting almost 60 to 40 when that game kicked off. Yeah. But, uh, but it was a, a really fun it, game. It's definitely it. fun. You think uh, we're going to get another fun game? I think we could have another fun game. You think it'll be close? No, I do not. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the line opened at 15. It did. 15 and a half. 15 and a half. It is down to 13 and a half. Yeah. It, well. Yeah, that's fine. If you got it at 13 and a half, it's great. Yeah. Let's I, see. I see it at 14. That's fine. It's okay. I mean, it's 13 and a half across the board here. Yeah. So, 15 and a half down to 13 and a half. It's 13 and a half. I love Boise State in this spot. Boise knows that they got to win, and they got to win convincingly. Hawaii has zero defense. You will be able to run on them. You'll be... And Boise's defense has been able to slow down Hawaii forever. Now, Hawaii, 9-4, and four, looking pretty good right now. Uh, Baylor, Baylor. Boise State, 11-1. and one. They need this win. I think Boise is, is worlds more talented than Hawaii is. What direction is the money going over there? The money is 50-50. So it's... In Vegas, it's 88% on Boise, but the line has dropped a point and a half. Now, we, but we've done the numbers on this. I know. That early on, it didn't matter. So, so yeah. It, a lot it of people always, on, It does scare the hell out of me. Yeah. So. I, I, but I, I really, like... 88 I, is a big number. We, 88 is a percentage that says, holy shit, something is happening. And yes, that makes me nervous. Boise is at home. They didn't have Hank in the first game. Yeah. No, yeah, he was out. At, this is the same matchup that we saw on, at the same location. I, I would not be upset if I see a 60-40 to 40 game. Oh, I'd love it. I don't want to see Hawaii get blowed out and it just be, you know, I'd, 45 to, you know, 15. 15, yeah, I don't, like, I don't, I don't want to see that. that. I, want, I want explosion. And I, I think you'll get it. I think you'll get it. That, uh, that game kicks off at 3 p.m., which is the same time as the SEC championship game. And I will probably be sitting in the Liberty Bowl at that point. So, oh yeah, I'll I'll be just all eyes on one game. No, that makes I'll, sense. I'm gonna miss every bit of it. But. That uh, that makes sense. I can understand. So, but yeah, it it'd be. I mean, I'll have it DVR'd. I'm gonna go back and watch it. I won't do that. So, well, it's because I've got every single I, I, NCAA I, I, game. I get it. DVR'd. I mean, you, you're a little. <laughs> you're different than me. I uh, you're dedicated to the calls. I believe that. Believe that. I, I my wife told me I watch too much football. No, no, you don't. I don't think that's possible. What uh? What's your last game? Inappropriate, but I won't do that. <laughs> I said something way inappropriate on the live show, and I'm I'm gonna try to stop that. <laughs> I'm going to the Georgia LSU game. Did All you right. guess that? I, I figured. Going much. to the SEC title game. We uh, my Tigers, my LSU Tigers, haven't trailed a whole lot all year. Nope. I don't think Kirby Smart can play when he gets down. I just I just don't. I've seen it too much that that when he gets down. He just he can't come back, and I think we're gonna kill him. I think people Swift might play, so it do, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Najee Harris is better than Swift. Like we've been up against running backs better than Swift. Okay. Yeah. It just it's just not gonna matter. I think we're gonna score early. I think their defense is good. Are we gonna hang forty five on them? Maybe not. Yeah, thirty eight. Yeah. I don't know that there's anybody in the we've we've had this conversation off of air. We've maybe had it a little bit on air in like passing the game of college football has changed so much to an offensive side i think the three offensive teams the best teams in the country and and i would throw alabama up there as the fourth team um because because if you were going to do a who's favored over who i think the only team alabama might be a dog to is these three teams and that's it i don't know that there is a defense in the country that holds these four teams to 35 38 points the game of football has changed so much to benefit the offense, especially in college. Like, it doesn't they matter stop, what defense you they, run. They stop the clock when you get, get get the first down, and they reset it, and then they – but that's just enough. I mean, that's 7 to 12 seconds between plays, and they're already running a hurry-up offense anyway. I mean, how many more snaps is that per game yeah. that you would get if you just kept the clock running? 
and it just wears the defense down. I mean, defenses used to be on the field for 60 plays, and it was crazy. And now Auburn was on the field for 80 snaps against uh, Alabama in the Iron Bowl. I just think it's going to get early. I think that defense is really good. But it, I, I think we're still going to score fast. Yeah. First quarter, we're going to be up by 14 points. And then at no point in time are we going to ever not be up by at least a field goal. We won't trail in the game. It's a seven-point line. I think we win by two scores pretty easily. All right, so you're doing minus seven? Yeah, minus seven. Give me 500 bucks on it. Minus seven, 500 bucks. the year, let's just go. Sounds good to me. Uh, my last game, write my time down here. My last game here, Wisconsin and Ohio State. Now, we have seen this before. And I took Wisconsin before. I did too. And that was a mistake. Now, that was in the cold in Columbus. And now you're going to give me those Ohio State athletes on turf inside a dome where you don't have to deal with weather. And I'm only giving up 15 and a half. I mean, it, this this almost looks like you're printing money here. Like, it, it, I understand Justin Fields might be having some problems, whatever. J.K. Dobbins ain't. That defense ain't. Like, this is the superior team. I'd be careful with that defense ain't, by the way. When Come that on. offense gets up two scores, that defense looks really good. But until then, Michigan... Michigan's not a great – they're a good offense. They're not a great offense. Michigan was about to score on every possession before the snap hit what's his – Sneed in the face. And he just dropped the ball, and then he kicked it, and then a, an Ohio State player fell on it. Michigan has a different offensive philosophy. I, I get it. I'm just, te- I'm just telling you, they might kill Wisconsin. That doesn't mean that defense is un- – oh, Okay, okay. How about this? Michi- this defense- Michigan was on track to put up 30 on them, 40 on them, and then they just got behind, and then therefore their offense yeah, was shit. Michigan put up 27 on them. Yeah. But, but they put was, up 56. Yeah. I can, no, I'm, like, I'm that, not saying, <laughs> just saying one part of your logic is not as foolproof as you think. They won the first, uh, first one 38 to 7. I don't know that they win by 31 this time, that's but a, would it surprise me? That's a lot. I, I, don't, it, I don't think it would surprise me. I mean, they, they could win by 17, and they would cover this. So, I'm doing Ohio State minus 15.5 for $300 here. Yeah, I I like Wisconsin in this game. I just want it to be close. I want to see a close game one time. I, I don't know that we're going to get it. I'm not betting it. Now, I, I would feel I'm better. I'm not betting on here. This is, you, you people should, should feel respect, by the way. I'd rather <laughs> bet my own money on it and not tell you about it. <laughs> <laughs> than to give a pick out that I'm not sold on. There you go. I care more about you getting the real information that I feel than I do my hard-earned money. There you go. There you go. All right. So that uh, that wraps up our picks. Of course, if you want to see them, you can go over to the gambling picks section over at winningcureseverything.com. But right now, he is the sideline reporter for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's based down in Tampa, Florida. He is T.J. Reeves. Every single week, we've got T.J. Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. You can find him on Twitter, at Guy. T.J., let's talk some college football. I want to start off. It's it's silly season. It's coach shirt season. Uh, mm. you, you got some stuff going on down there, uh, obviously. I can confirm for you right now <laughs> that I am not a candidate to take any of these jobs that are out there because I have too much fun being on with the Winning Cures guys and doing whatever it is that I do. So I want to make that clear that I am reporting. I am breaking the story here on the podcast slash YouTube show, Winning Cures Everything. I am not a candidate for any of these jobs. Sounds Just good to me. There. Now, Lane Kiffin is a Ooh. candidate for a lot of them. Um, and our boy Mike Norvell from Memphis is mm. a candidate for the Florida State job, along with multiple <sighs> others. Uh it, what are you hearing down there? What's what's the word? Wow. I, I know that everybody Where? in Tallahassee is mad uh, about the <laughs> idea of Mike Norvell, but uh, but tell me what you're hearing. So there's there's great intrigue and there's no shortage of ways the soap opera can turn here because Florida State has had a three week head start on firing Willie Taggart, 
And as we talk right now, and they may be hearing us and seeing your YouTube show later in the week, in the weekend, and Florida State finally pulls the trigger, but the Knowles haven't made a hire. So that tells me two things. Number one, there's either indecisiveness on their part about who they really want and who they've zeroed in on, or two, they are going to let Championship Saturday play out because they, they believe they have a legitimate shot at somebody like Norvell, Matt Rule, the Baylor coach, et cetera, et cetera. Notice the way that I phrase that. They believe they have the legitimate shot at one of those guys, whether it's true or not. Uh, so I, that one, I, I, I don't understand that one. I, I don't understand why they don't have their guy uh, right now uh, and le- unless they have the agreement and it hasn't leaked out and, and he's coaching on Saturday. That can be the only explanation for F- FSU on that one. Now, in this market, USF did fire Charlie Strong. I know we've been talking about him since the beginning of the year on your show. So that was not surprising. The real, the real concern for them is who are they going to end up with when you've got SEC jobs, when you've got Florida State open in the state, jobs like Boston College and Washington and some others, what, what kind of candidate can USF actually hope to get? So that one's intriguing. And then the name Lane Kiffin comes into all of this, who coaches down in South Florida at Florida Atlantic, FAU in the Conference USA Championship game for the second time in three years, hosting the game second time in three years against UAB, Alabama, Birmingham. And, and you, you wonder, does Lane have one eye on the championship game and one eye, or may, maybe he needs three or four eyes. Does he have three or four eyes on all the jobs and all the offers that are coming out there? So <laughs> you're right. we got no shortage in the Sunshine State boys. Now, you, you did bring up that championship game. Uh, I believe you are covering that game, right? You are, are you calling the game? I will be, yes. Privileged for the fifth year in a row to be on the call on TuneIn and the TuneIn mobile app of the CUSA championship game. And it's, it's kind of a home game for me, not, not far from Tampa, about three hours to the south to do that game. So Saturday, 1.30 Eastern time, 12.30 there in the mid-south, your time, adjust your time zone accordingly, find the TuneIn app for free, TuneIn uh, radio, TuneIn app for free, uh, the Conference USA championship game. I'm looking forward to the call of that one. Because, again, there will be as much intrigue around who wins the championship of Conference USA. There'll be some. There'll be more intrigue intrigue on is it Lane Kiffin's final game. Chris Giannini, you're being very quiet right now in this part of the conversation. I don't want to monopolize. I don't want to dominate here. Do you believe Lane Kiffin headed to Arkansas? Do you believe he's headed to one of these Joel Miss, one of these SEC jobs? I would love for him to come back to the SEC. I think it's a lot more fun. Um, if I was an athletic director at Ole Miss or Arkansas – I would I would grab Lane. I would try to find a good DC. I I have I've talked to many Ole Miss friends over the week, and I told them if 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 they would make me athletic director and give me carte blanche, I get all rules. I can make whatever I want happen. I'm going to get Lane. I'm telling Lane to grab Kendall, pack their stuff, head up to Oxford, and then I'm going to get Barry Odom, and I'm going to tell him you you get the Dave Aranda treatment. You're going to run the DC. You won't answer to Lane. You won't answer to anybody else. You will run the defense as if you are the head coach of all defensive personnel and, uh, and players, they will run the offense, and, uh, and we will see if we can make some noise in Oxford. I'm, I'm a little well, surprised. Very interesting. I, very, Chris... I didn't mean to interrupt. Very, very interesting that the reporting is that Arkansas and Hunter Juracek, the athletic director, met with Lane Kiffin in person Sunday in Boca Raton, uh, and and talk with him at length for whatever that means. Is it one of the candidates? Is he the candidate? Do they have a secret deal? And the belief is that he would reunite with Kendall Bryles, who was with him at FAU down in South Florida for a year. Kendall Bryles now at Florida State as the offensive coordinator, and they're all in limbo. So you, you lay out a good one. I, I, is the Arkansas job the worst of the two jobs with Ole Miss right now? Are they on an even plane? They, they both are in the West where you've got the Godzilla schedule in, in the West. Uh, I think it's a great debate. Uh, the only reason I think Ole Miss is a better job is strictly because of in-state talent. Um, I, the state of Mississippi has just far more talent than the state of Arkansas does. They don't have another big school to recruit with, but the high school talent coming out of Arkansas is not close to Mississippi. It's just not. Gotcha. Well, we'll see what he does. So that'll be that'll be interesting uh, for the championship game on Saturday. Dual tracks there, and we've seen this before. Remember, a couple of years ago, it was Scott Frost completing the perfect 
regular season and then the championship game win against the Memphis Tigers, I still I still bleed over back to back losses for my Tigers. You know I'm I'm an alum losing to UCF twice to row in the championship game. Scott Frost is in the first, in the post game press conference. The first question is about him taking the Nebraska job because it had leaked out. Not not are you happy that you won the championship and you're undefeated. <laughs> it's what about you taking the Nebraska job? So I wonder if we're kind of in the, for the same thing on the reporting about Arkansas or Ole Miss and Lane Kiffin. We'll see. Uh, I'm surprised that that Chris did not say that he would rather take UAB's coach because uh, he is Bill a, Clark. No, I'm, a okay, Bill Clark. I'm a, I'm a Bill Clark, just truther. Okay, that's just the, the the end of it. I I love the man and I want him to take a big job. If I had to take the safe bet, if I had to take um, somebody who's going to stabilize a program and I think has a super high floor, then I think Bill Clark is the answer. The problem is, is if I have an opportunity to be an athletic director. We're we're nuking the thing. We're either we're either going for. We will not be boring. We might be bad, but we will be entertaining. We gonna put butts in the seats. Well, that's TV's that's part of it, and, and so the hope would be the hope would be whether you're talking Norvell, whether you're talking Lane Kiffin, uh, you know, is the sexy hire, the offensive minded hire. We'll we'll see on the carousel here, and it's it's going to be crazy. With those three SEC jobs open, Boston College, Florida State, University of Washington, what Brian Kelly at Notre Dame. I have had more than one Florida State person tell me that Brian Kelly would be an interesting name, and, and supposedly there's been contact with him, that he has dissatisfaction with a couple of things in South Bend, one of those being the extra stringent, over-the-top, what a surprise, academic requirements at Notre Dame, where, as Kelly, as Kelly, I guess, has privately put it, if not publicly put it out there, that they've missed out on several big-time recruits in the last few years that could get into every other major school, basically, in the Big Ten, the SEC, et cetera, and he can't get them into Notre Dame. And he's kind of fed up with that part of being at Notre Dame. Um, and the other, and the other part is he believes there's another challenge still left for him. And maybe that's the NFL. I, I don't know that Brian Kelly leaves and comes to Florida state, leaves Notre Dame and comes to Florida state, Brian Kelly to the NFL. I might believe that. Yeah. I, I said the same thing. Gary and I did, a, did an emergency show the other day, kind of going over this stuff. And, and I don't think there's any way on earth. He le- he's probably upset about the ap- academic standards, but you're not leaving Notre Dame for Tallahassee. I just don't, I don't, I don't think that's happening. Um, but I, I, I could see Brian Kelly like retiring. No, I, from, I think from he would, Notre Dame. I think he would want. Yes, I could see that. But I think if he leaves anywhere, I do think it's to to coach on Sundays to try and see can he do that. But I don't think there's any way he's taking the Florida State job. Now I could be wrong, but that that just that would shock me. It will not be dull this weekend and Monday Tuesday on who ends up where because it is going to be. Uh, crazy with how fast the information starts going left and right. I mean, if Baylor wins, for example, early in the Big 12 championship game, how much does that hinder whether Matt Rule would take a job uh, if somebody like Florida State is trying to grab him, if, if uh, you know, an SEC, if it's one of the SEC schools that's trying to grab him to step up from Baylor, I, what happens if they win? I mean, that's a great, that's a great question on, on them. If Norvell and Memphis win against Cincinnati and turn a New Year's Six Bowl as the American Conference champions, is he so quick to take another job? Or is it wait wait until we play that New Year's Six Bowl game? I, I don't know. And so that's the great unknown for Championship Saturday. So for Baylor and with Matt Rule, I, I think Matt Rule might leave for the NFL. He kicked the tires on an interview for a couple of jobs last year. Um, I think he's intrigued by the NFL and wants to do that one day. I don't think that there is a job open today that is better than the Baylor job. I'm not saying the Baylor job is the greatest job in the country, but Ole Miss doesn't have as deep of pockets as they got in Waco. Arkansas has got deep pockets, but you can't recruit in Arkansas like you can recruit in Texas. I, I, and, and I don't think Florida State or Missouri are, are that level either. Florida State's a great job. I wouldn't leave Baylor where I'm happy. I built something from nothing. I'm a god right now. If I And there, job I security. Yeah, yeah, I'm safe. I'm safe. I don't want to re I don't know. Does he want to rebuild train wrecks all the time? It's a good question. Yeah. Well, we'll see. And, and again, uh, he, his marketability, his leverage goes way up. If we get to about four Eastern time Saturday and they have knocked off Oklahoma 
and are sitting pretty for the potential college football playoff that's right. coming up. So that's that's another part. We'll see. Let's uh before we let you go on this one, let let's dive into a, a couple of games. Now we brought up UAB at Florida Atlantic. Mm-hmm. UAB is catching seven here. Uh, Bill Clark really good as an underdog, uh, but they are playing in Boca Raton. What what do we you know any chance this ends I'm, up? On I'm the liking uh, I'm liking how this lines up. I really I thought it would be a little less of a line. Again, what do I know? We talk about this all the time on your show with FAU as a seven. That that line open Chris at seven. I believe something like that or seven and a half, and it has stayed there right now. And again, I'm realistic enough to understand how many people are gambling. Uh, you know, nationwide, worldwide, online, Las Vegas on the Conference USA championship game versus the SEC <laughs> or the Big Ten or the Big 12 title game. So I get that. Um, but they they have been very good uh, on the road. Their, their top running back, Spencer Brown, has gotten healthy. I think that's a big factor for them in this matchup. He had a 100-yard game, his first one of the year. Uh, had a high ankle sprain earlier in the year. Had a 100-yard game in their last game here with North Texas. I think they will be able to play ball control uh, good defensively. Let's just see what happens here. But I, I'm, I'm taking a strong look at UAB and the points. Conference USA title game against FAU, Florida Atlantic, and Lane Kiffin in that Saturday matchup at Florida Atlantic. Now, you'll be at that game. I will be at the Liberty Bowl on Saturday afternoon at 2.30. Mm. Uh, Cincinnati, a nine and a half point dog at Memphis. This is a rematch from last week. Memphis won by ten last week, but they they did have a few things bounce their direction. Uh, and Desmond Ritter, the uh, the quarterback for Cincinnati, did not play in that game. They started a freshman in that one, and I mean he was pretty lights out. So yeah, he played and- well. This, this this game scares me just because it's the same opponent again. I know Memphis has got the game at home, but it's almost like last week. Really doesn't matter. Didn't count. I mean, it does count because you get the you get in the championship game A and B. You get it at home, so it did matter. But now, now this is the one that everybody will remember. And if I'm Luke Fickle, I got 60 minutes of game tape on how to get after Brady White and, and that run game. I don't know that they're going to be able to completely neutralize them, but they could slow them down. Again, I'm a Memphis alum. I want the Tigers to be 12 and one and win this game and win it convincingly and then end up in the New Year's Six Bowl games as, as a group of five participant in the Cotton Bowl. But it scares me. That line scares me. This this could be a nail-biter game, and we were headed maybe for a nail-biter game. They, they were on the verge of breaking that game wide open last weekend, oh, yeah. and they settled for the field goal. And then from then on, Cincinnati kind of played off the confidence that they got from that point on. And, again, we got 60 more minutes here. It concerns me. I hope Memphis rolls. I'm not sure that they do, boys. I, uh, I'm i with you. Now, uh, let, let's talk about two other big games here. Georgia catching 7.5 against LSU. <laughs> this one's Atlanta. Uh, I cannot see Brother Giannini, but he is just shaking his head no, isn't he? He is shaking fact, his he head is. no for Three Dog <laughs> Thursday purposes, aren't you, Chris? Anybody do not, who wants to take not. this game, you can just listen. We'll cut the house out of it. Just friendly wager between you and I. Save the VIG. I'll take whatever actually. <laughs> I got the number at seven. It's an even touchdown. So if you uh, well, take I it. mean, <laughs> I, I am staying away from that one because I, I think LSU will win and will win convincingly. And at the time that we're talking, we don't know if Swift, who's questionable, the running back, can play. Jake Fromm has not been outstanding down the stretch of the season. So. They, they've had a tremendous year, but they, they are about to get in there with a Godzilla who's got their eyes on potentially being the number one seed uh, here in the in the college football playoffs. So I think I'm staying away, Chris. I'm staying away from Georgia. All right, and finally, the last game of the night, Wisconsin getting 15 and a half against Ohio State. You can get 16 and a half. Is it 16 and a half? Wow. Yeah, 16 and a half right it's, here. It's moved, and it, but it opened So you wonder in this one, does Wisconsin play with a chip on their shoulder? Obviously, it's a rematch from Ohio State having beaten them earlier in the year. Jonathan Taylor, fantastic. Uh, running the football, they were so good last week against Minnesota. Does, does Ohio State have a little bit of a letdown after beating down their rival Michigan last week? I don't know. I mean, the the Buckeyes, again, have every motivation to squash Wisconsin like they did uh, back when they got in the original college football playoff and beat them 59 to nothing with a third-string quarterback. So 
Let's just let's just see. I, I again, I think I'm going to steer clear of, uh, of the of the Badgers on the neutral field against Ohio State in this one, boys. Especially, I mean, Wisconsin. I don't think I don't think they want anything to do with facing that speed on turf. I mean, that's just that 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 one could get ugly. That could get really ugly. All right, he is TJ Reeves. You can find him on the Three Dog Thursday podcast. You can get it anywhere you get your podcast: Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, etc. Uh, make sure you go subscribe, leave him a nice review, tell him that Winning Cures Everything sent you. He uh, he would appreciate that. TJ, we will see you again next week. My friends, here we go. Championship Saturday. I'm anxious to see what happens with all of these games. Uh, most interestingly here, the SEC title game. I think that we all believe LSU is in. So a Georgia victory is going to take a slot from somebody because they'll remain at number four. I don't. I think Ohio State is probably safe. Oh, yeah. I think Ohio State would slide at worst to number four here, but we don't know. So could could Ohio State get a a college football playoff spot, boys, without winning the Big Ten championship? That'll be interesting. Uh, let's watch it all play out. I'm anxious to talk more about it on Three Dog Thursday. And Gary Seegers, you're going to be with me on Three Dog Thursday to break it down some more on on uh, my podcast here. I always love being with you. And again, I, I confirm with you guys, I am not a candidate for any of these jobs, boys. <laughs> we we love you, buddy. We're glad you're sticking with us. <laughs> Be well, boys. Happy happy championship Saturday. We appreciate TJ hopping in here with us. TJ is always a good time. You can find the Three Dog Thursday podcast anywhere that you get your podcasts. Make sure you go subscribe and leave a nice review for him. Tell him Winning Cures Everything sent you. He always appreciates hearing that. Uh, I think that's going to wrap up. Um, We've got winningcureseverything.com. Go check out the website. All of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms, etc. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. If you're listening on the podcast, make sure you hit like. Or no, hit subscribe. Excuse me. There's no like button on the podcast. But uh, hit subscribe and leave a nice review for us. We uh, we'd like reading those things out. We'll read them on the show as we go along. We do appreciate all of you jumping in with us, of course. And yeah, go check out Smack Apparel. They've got... Fantastic stuff. Smackapparel.com. Use promo code WIN. You get 20% off. And any order over 40 bucks is going to ship for free. You can't get a better deal than that. Go check them out. Smackapparel.com. Promo code WIN for 20% off. And the show, of course, every week brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. Anything else we need to hit? That's it, brother. I think that's it. This has been a fun ride, a fun season. We didn't do so well this Last year. Last week, but you get to fade us. Yeah, you got that right. If you uh, if you faded me, you would be 68 and 44 this year. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. So We had fun. We did have fun. You got um, what you paid for. That's, you got that right because you didn't pay for nothing. That's right. So we do appreciate y'all for hanging around with us, yeah, though, absolutely. all season. We will be back. We will be doing all of the bowl games. All of them. A separate video for every single bowl game. All of them. If you listen on the podcast, though, you can get them all nice and yeah, we'll little, we'll put a couple of them we'll together segment them together. Time. But uh, but yeah, yeah go check it out. WinningCuresEverything dot com. Make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already. Keep up with us. Uh, just because football season is winding down doesn't mean we're going anywhere. Obviously, we're going to stick through all of the NFL season, and then we've got recruiting, and we've got all of the news that comes out after that. We're going to hit on coaches stuff, and we're going to hit on all the other sports. We talk about everything over here. Uh, We ain't going anywhere. We're going to be around even though football season is done. This was our fourth football season together. Hopefully, you will stick around with us. We will see you all again uh, at the end of the week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.